Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. Hello, guys. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Good people, welcome. By the way, I don't want to discriminate bad people. Welcome to our show as well. Anyone who want to learn more about digital PR, welcome because we today can learn how to add authoritative and relevant links. And I'm so excited to, to, to have today on our show, Ferry, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good. Um, I'm, I'm traveling at the moment, but uh, I can still, you know, share my knowledge wherever I am, right? I can be in a cave. As long as we have uh, internet, I can still share my knowledge. Um, it's all good. And nice, I'm, nice. Uh, grateful to be here as well. Uh, you know, you uh, often um, appeal on my feed on LinkedIn. You know, you're super active on that. You share valuable insights, high engagement. I love learning your posts because you share stories. It's interesting, you know. Uh, before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you decided to share with us about PR. Well, <clears throat> my experience, um, so it, it depends how far back do you want me to go, right? Because um, SEO was a passion of me, um, of mine for many, many, probably many decades, I would say. And um, I figured out that the hardest part of SEO is building quality links. And I said, like, no matter what, I'm going to find a way, you know, to to do it, this like a scale and um, to do it consistently. I think that's the biggest part of, you know, link building. It's not enough to have just, you know, links from whatever BBC. <clears throat> it's also important to have links coming in consistently all the time. So a link that you earned two years ago is almost irrelevant. And I always shout about this, like, don't just rely on like, oh, I've got a link from, you know, ITV News. Um, it doesn't matter if the link has been earned, you know, two years ago or three years ago. So. I just had to figure out a way to build links consistently um, and regularly to, you know, to our clients' websites and even to our own websites. We have, you know, a few websites that we monetize with ads. And um, I've had search, I, I own Search Intelligence Limited. It's a um, company based in the UK. We are 50 people on the team now um, and growing fast. Hopefully we'll be 100 people next year. And I've decided I'm going to quit doing any SEO service, any software development service. We've been doing lots of software um, in the past and any you know, SEO consultancy, and we'll focus on one thing, and that is digital PR. So we are not an SEO agency, even though we are like experts in SEO, right? I mean, I hope I hope we are. Um, but we don't do SEO now. We only focus on link building and supporting other SEO companies and SEO freelancers even, and even SEO, you know, I would call them influencers from, you know, YouTube and all over the, you know, social media who buy PR campaigns from us. And, and mm -hmm. that's what we do, one service, and um, that is digital PR. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, nice. Uh, you know, once I read uh, an article online that you paid bills uh, for the whole winter, for all team. Can you tell more about that? Why you decided to pay uh, to clean all these bills for your team, 50 people? I think it's a lot. But, you know, uh, what is the main goal of doing this? Charity, PR, any insights about that? The main goal is to make sure people stick with us and people love our company. Nice. Because it really reflects on it really reflects on the quality of, of the work that clients receive. Eventually, it's a business strategy. It's a business strategy mm -hmm. aimed at improving the workplace and creating a, a talent hub at our company. And we can only do it if we are generous and kind with people and if we build an environment where they love to be. Yeah, like fancy, you know, whatever pizza, it, it's nice. And even having like fancy offices or whatever, you know, company event is awesome. But we really want to make uh, the company have a real impact on people's lives and on their families' lives. Therefore, we have a business strategy of creating an extremely favorable environment for our employees, which means super high pay. So we pay them really well. We also you know, pay uh, for December, January, and February. We pay the electricity bills, £250 per month for every employee with no condition. We don't need, you know... Like, 
it's not tied to any KPI or nothing. Everyone who works for us, 250 pounds extra on top of their, you know, very good salary compared to, you know, most other agencies. Um, and, and we just want to attract, you know, the best people and keep the best people with you know, extreme kindness and extreme generosity. Nice. So this, 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 yeah, this scheme costs us a few tens of thousands of pounds, but it's still the best investment. Even now, looking back, it's the best investment of the company's profits. Instead of you know taking out that you know like whatever thirty something forty thousand um, pounds in in dividends and buying myself you know I know something, I'd rather keep that in the business and we reinvest it into our people. Nice. Awesome. Well, Love it. Like, Love it. it will have a massive impact next year. And even, you know, apart from that, we even, you know, gave, I, I'm, I'm not going to shout about this. I'm not going to talk about how much, but like a very large part of our profits this year went back into bonuses this mm -hmm. month. I'm not going to say how much. I don't want this to be like a, you know, seem like a PR or whatever. And I'm not even going to post about it on LinkedIn, but we really mm -hmm. invest most of the profits back into our people. It's, it's a secret recipe and then hopefully, you know, other companies will follow suit as well. If, you know, if they want to retain talent, the best way to do it is, you know, one of the best things is to pay them well, right? That's because they have families, they have kids, they want to take, you know, maybe their kids to um, France and on a, on a holiday. And, and maybe if, you know, they, they are more, they can afford that better, right? Nice. So, yeah. yeah. Love it, love it. Okay, uh, Fari, I have the question about uh, <clears throat> PR. Uh, for example, you know, um, online, if someone can go to Upwork or any other places, we have two options. Someone who can propose distribution and contribution. You know, one option costs uh, a little bit. I don't remember exactly the price, like $50. The second more than uh, plus a few thousand dollars. Can you tell the difference? Why it's important to choose uh, the expensive option uh, and uh, about uh, the second cheap option? Uh, do we have some dangers with this option? Any insights about that? Okay, so by, by distribution, you mean like these PR news wires, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like the news wires? I think I think that's that's too general. With, with, with this service, you don't get to pick up exactly, you know, you cannot target journalists as sharply as as you would with a bespoke service, mm -hmm. right? But you cannot re-angle pieces. So, for example, a press release can have ten different angles. With a PR newswire, just send it out, you know, to news desks and whatever. And there's no there's no real personalized approach to distribution. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go with like a full bespoke service, like you know, um, like as you say, the more expensive one, you have one press release. Uh, one data, like it's either data driven or whatever expert commentary, but then you can reangle it into different, you know, different sections even or different states. Let's say if we find out about um, the states with the, the most dangerous roads in, in in the United States, then we are, are you know, you you can actually have, um, you you can actually have various angles split up and you can send it to journalists from New York and then journalists from, you know, Washington and journalists from California. And then you can segmentize your, your data. And it's, it's just, I mean, it just generates better results on like all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, reaching out the right journalists because, you know, uh, many people just, uh, send emails to random emails, you know, uh, I don't know how they can uh, find them, but in the end, they send to anyone who uh, is uh, related or uh, close related to the industry. Can you tell your methods how to reach out the right journalists who are interested in this topic, specific topic, and yeah, to get submissions and results? Indeed. So... So we are using, um, as you might have seen, you know, and many, many might have seen in, in, in my posts, I always give away everything. Uh, mm -hmm. We are using Rocks Hill and Mockrack. We used to use Cision as well, but nobody was using Cision, so we gave up on that tool. But Cision is, is just as good. Um, Rocks Hill and Mockrack, um, which are media databases curated by the by, by real people. You know, they also have like scrapers and everything that they do. 
this, besides you know having a team who is curating your lists, but you can just filter by topic of of, of, of previous coverage that that mm -hmm. each journalist has had, and then you can just put in you know give me the list of journalists who have written about um, dangerous driving in the past six months in the United States. And it's going to give you, you know, a list of hundreds of journalists, typically, um, that has covered topics about dangerous driving. And then you can do, you know, different different queries. You can, you know, add, just like with Google, um, you can have advanced uh, search operators where you say, give me journalists who talk about dangerous driving or uh, accidents or um, whatever keywords you want to add in. And then it's going to give you the list. You can just... Uh, Select select those journalists and then send them the email straight from Rocks Hill. It's really really powerful. So I know many people are looking for the cheap way of doing it, but there's no cheap way. Let's make it clear. Like if you want quality quality journalists, then you have to be ready to pay for it. Right? It's it's for one license. I think it's it's like six hundred pounds or five hundred pounds a month. We pay about fifty thousand pounds a year because we have a large team and we have like um, licenses for lots of people. Um, so for an agency of like, I know, 50 people, it's probably going to be about, if you are using just one tool, probably 25, 30,000 pounds a year. If you're using both tools, then it's going to be around 50 plus thousand pounds per year in, um, in, in licenses. But I mean, it's worth it. If you want to get the job done in the best way possible, then, then you have to, you know, you have to be willing to invest because in, in turn, your clients will invest with you. Right. If you are not going for the cheap solution, then your clients are not going to go for the cheap solution. They're going to use you because you're using the best tools. Hopefully, you'll have the best teams by you know paying them well, right? And then creating an infrastructure where they can flourish. And then just you know just don't be cheap with with this service because the the clients will also not be cheap with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, press release. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's important to write the right press release uh, with the right information, news source information, links source information. Can you tell how to do it? Because you know, I often check out uh, your examples, and you use Google Trends, you know, to uh, take topics that mm -hmm. are trending now. Uh, any other secrets uh, or information how to write press release? Because you know, uh, once I spoke with um, an SEO expert, uh, uh, and he told me that he uses uh, AI, chat, open AI, you know, uh, to write press releases, and yeah, yeah. he got results with that. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah it's interesting well, because I tried one time uh, to create press release uh, with chat, open AI. Um, yeah, uh, this tool can write press release. I'm not sure it's newsworthy or uh, something valuable, but it can do a good job with that. So any insights about writing press release? Yeah, I think I think that's really something that's worth exploring, like like ChatGPT, because we are exploring it now for you know even generating headlines for our mm -hmm. um, press releases. So we are trying to integrate, trying to see if their API is available. We have a dev team. So, um, but to answer your question, like how do you write press releases that journalists want to cover? It's really just keeping it simple and keeping it interesting. Make sure, you know, like if if it resonates with the current events, the the journalists will likely cover it. Like with the football, mm -hmm. we had a we ha we have a cleaning uh, carpet like a cleaning client in the UK. They are one of the UK's biggest franchises, fantastic services, and they have this um, carpet cleaning website uh, or like the cleaning website where they have like a carpet cleaning URL. And because it was the World Cup, we created a story. Like called expert reveals tips to clean your beer from your carpets. From mm -hmm. as, as, you know, it was a World Cup. People are spilling beer, right? They're drinking beer, watching. You know, football. <laughs> and it was the perfect timing, completely relevant to the events. And we landed like nice. you know, 30, 30 links, I think 20, 20, 30 links with this single story in all you know the regional uh, U.S. Uh, U.K. publications, um, even the national was I think the Express picked it up and lots of other websites because. You have to be very clever with the way you angle the story to make sure it fits the journalist agenda. That's that's the secret. You can write you know, the most interesting. You, know, you have discovered you know an alien in your garden. 
nobody will cover it if it doesn't fit, you know, the journalist agenda and if it's not, you know, if it's not something that journalists think that their audience will actually click on and read, right? So always look at how can you, how can you fit within, you know, the journalist agenda. If it's um, strictly gone dancing, like there's going to be lots of stories going out about, you know, um, the stars from, you know, this uh, this you know, dancing show, and it, there's always things you can tie in, you know, um, how can like there's there's so many things that you can tie in with every event that's happening in the world. And it's it just, you know, make sure you fit the agenda. For w Winter, it's perfect for, you know, like boiler clients, like you will smash it. If you share tips on how to, you know, save on your energy bills, how to bleed your radiator, how to do whatever that's related to the cold. Every journalist is now writing about the cold, is writing about, you know, saving on energy. It's, it's a perfect timing. So always look at opportunities uh, where you can write the press release around, you know, hopefully like make it, keep it relevant to your clients, but then fit the client within the journalist agenda. Nice, nice. Yeah, interesting. So you unite uh, existing trends with uh, the topic. So yeah, interesting. Indeed. Absolutely. It's that's that's the secret, right? It always, if, <laughs> if you can do that, whatever interesting you know tips you share with the press, they will likely cover it. Um, also, keep keep the press release simple. Don't overcomplicate the, the press release. It's going like, "Good morning. Oh, the sun is so shiny out there, and there's barely any clouds. How's your dogs and cats doing? Like, let me share something with you. Don't do it, right? Don't don't talk about yeah. it. Just go and straight, you know, help the journalists sh create a shortcut for the journalists from you know you sending the email to them publishing it. Make it the the easiest, most convenient way for them to do it. Like, keep it short. Keep it exactly what they want. Give it to them, and they will, you know, um, they will cover the story. And of course, ask always ask for the link in the in the press release. Say like, hey, if you like this story, please, you know, um, credit our client with the link who commissioned the research. And then, ninety percent mm -hmm. of cases, percent of cases, they will actually link to the client because they are humans as well. They appreciate your mm -hmm. work, and they know you have, you know, worked hard to put this together. And then they they are also, you know, willing to, of course, help you and help your client if you help them. Yeah, exactly. And you can help them to find good content so yep. they can post this content. Yep. They don't need to create content. And, you know, uh, ask, from, ask about another secret, uh, how to reach DR websites, high DR websites. So with high domain uh, rating, any insights about that? <laughs> well, typically, I know it's a very good question and then we get this very often. Typically, all of these news websites are or high DR. We don't go to like the little bloggers. I mean, sometimes they might end up in our list, but we don't target these little, you know, like smaller bloggers. I mean, sometimes we do get links from them and it's, you know, if the link is relevant, even a DR30 link is a good link. If, you know, the story is about how to clean your carpets from beer, I mean, that's still a good link, I would say, but, but typically, you know, we target all of the big ones as well, like, you know, The Sun, uh, The Mirror, Daily Express, New York Post, uh, Washington Examiner, and uh, Bloomberg, and all of these. We always, you know, make sure that those journalists are in our lists and we, you know, include them in, in our, you know, in our outreach. So we don't specifically go and say, okay, we're not going to include these because they are DR whatever, or we, we're only going to include these because they are DR 80 plus. We always go to relevancy. And whether it's a DR90, 92 website or a DR50 website, we still include them as long as we know the journalist is gonna, you know, likely cover our stories. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, once John Wheeler uh, shared insights about uh, PR, and he told that uh, PR works well for SEO, sometimes better than technical optimization, uh, but. He highlighted that uh, some uh, link builders use PR as a spammy method. So it <clears> depends <throat> on methods how to use it. Can you tell more about that? What do you think? What John Mueller means by that? Uh, by sharing that you can use like spammy or uh, like uh, uh, getting editorial links. Uh, links. I mean, like uh, so when uh, journalists decide to put this link or not. Yeah. Well, I think I think this newswire. You know. I'm not a fan of news wires. I know many people are smashing it now with news wires, right? And I know it it, it works. It can work, mm -hmm. but probably that's that's the PR activity that would fall within, like the spammy spammy techniques. Because sometimes a news wire can get the same story on like 200 
whatever um, aggregator sites with the same anchor text, same same thing, just copy paste. Uh, most of them are um, most of them, yeah, most of them are, are the same exact same, same headline, even the same URL structure. And most of them are not interesting. I think that's where it kind of it's almost spammy. I mean, I would wouldn't say it's black hat because you know it's 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 not gonna, probably not going to damage the reputation of the website, but still, it's not that EAT building activity. <clears throat> it's not that EAT build. You know, EAT is being built when all these big publications start mentioning you as the expert in your field, who provides insights or tips. That's you know, that builds. EAT and now E right now the new you know yeah the old EAT not the new one the new one will need like need you to be you know testing things right the e, um, EAT um, mm-hmm. but but these spammy kind of what, what we would call them news wires would I mean um, I cannot see any value in them so I would say that w- those would be you know the 200 aggregator sites picking up the same story that's not interesting enough to be covered in like the sun and then all of these like dr10 websites are being up i would say that's what john probably referred to yeah yeah i think so uh okay we have the question uh about uh mm-hmm, about another link building techniques like guest posting and sometimes for masters are asking about high price uh you know pr uh if you use pr it's free uh of course you can pay for a PR agency, you know, uh, they charge for their time. Uh, but uh, if you're talking about PR, it's free and uh, it's not about this question. What do you think about other link building techniques? Do we need to mix them with PR? Uh, I mean, like about Whitehead SEO, Skyscraper, I don't know, name them, uh, many others, broken link building. Do you think it's a good idea to mix them with PR or it's enough just to have PR? Well, as somebody who builds, you know, I mean, whose agency builds about 1,000 to 1,500 white hat links per month, mm-hmm. you would nice. say, I would say that guest blogs, niche edits, um, as you said, skyscraper technique, all of these link building methods are extremely good. And you would, mm-hmm. you would expect to say, oh, those are, they work, right? Let's make it clear. They work, and I think people should do that as well. People should mm-hmm. invest in blogger outreach. Not, not, not that blogger outreach of like just adding a random anchor text throughout, you know, a random paragraph with a random anchor text throughout, you know, a content that's not that doesn't make any sense. I think quality blogger outreach, where you actually provide a good article, a, a good insight, a good value to the readers, and that's how you include your client as well. I think. It's very good. And if you combine that technique with white hat PR links that build EAT, and then those, you know, um, you can focus more on on specific anchor text, on specific keywords. You know, if you combine these two and even niche edits, if they are, you know, quality niche edits, I would say they work extremely well. So I'm never going to dismiss those techniques because I know they work. I know companies, you know, we have clients who spend who spend 30k 30k a month with us on, on PR links and then they spend another 15,000 pounds a month on blogger outreach and they are just exploding right it just works so I, w- I would say yes they are really really good and they should not be left out um from you know um, as a link building method they should definitely be used but use it in the right way not just you know those websites who only link to, who have like 200 um casino outbound links like i would say those would be a red flag especially if they are from articles that have that makes no sense right yeah yeah i agree i agree by the way i think it's better to consider your strong side if you are good with a skyscraper why not you can use this technique yes. uh, if you can combine both yeah just do it yeah no. yeah indeed, indeed. Yeah, and uh, I see a trap when, you know, uh, web masters are trying to cover a lot of techniques without having success with one. It's a not good idea. Yeah, no. it's better. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ferry, I have the question about uh, checklist. Do you have some specific checklist uh, how to uh, start PR campaigns? For example, if you have a new customer, uh, I'm interested about your brainstorming to find these ideas. Uh, of course, for example, I know about trends, World Cup, 
the weather in the US, any. And uh, you want to relate to a specific topic. Uh, can you tell how to brainstorm these ideas, uh, find the right angle? Uh, because, you know, um, most PR campaigns have no links. Uh, it's hard to get results because uh, probably they don't spend enough time, you know, to brainstorm, to find interesting ideas that journalists will like. So any insights about your checklist, the process, how you do it? So brainstorming always starts with the client first. So mm -hmm. first of all, we have to know that the client is okay with, with certain topics. So every every client is, is within a niche. And some clients want like very specific, like, you know, we had a client who was selling watches. And it's just not enough, you know, topics to cover just about watches. So we had to kind of broaden the area of like you know, luxury watches, right? They were selling luxury. So broaden it a little bit to go out to the luxury segment. So we had more topics to cover. So we just have to work together with the client to to see how much we can expand from their initial niche um, up to a point where we still keep some relevancy to, to them. But, but we also have great potential learning links because if we would just talk about Rolex watches, we will probably never land, you know, links for them, right? But if we go to the luxury market and then somehow we include them um, within the press release as the experts in luxury watches who provide insights in, you know, the luxury market, then we immediately increase, like, the pool of um, journalists who we can reach out to, like, exponentially. So it all starts, brainstorming all starts with the client. How much are they willing and how much also we consider that it's reasonable to expand from just their niche um, just to make sure the links are going to be valuable and, and we can keep relevancy to it, uh, to the client. So that's number one. Once we define, you know, the area of like how much the client is willing to go out and broaden the topics, then we, I would say the best way to start ideation is go to the news publications and, and see what journalists have covered um, previously on the same topic. If they mm -hmm. covered the topic extensively last year, then you would want to put that, you know, topic and that those ideas, those headlines into a spreadsheet um, because they are more likely to cover it this year as well. So if, let's say, Time Out writes about, um, I don't know, the best electric cars and the, like the, the UK's electric car hotspots or electric uh, car charging point hotspots, if they have written about it last year, then it's most likely that this year they will also cover it with a fresh data. So, you know, that's a, that's a good way to look, look at, go to the publications, look at what, what the journalists have written about in the past few months, um, not in the past three months, but prior to the past three or four months. And you have a great pool of ideas there on almost every topic. So especially if you go to like Time Out or even Bloomberg or all of these big publications, you will see what their agenda was. And that's a good starting point to start putting down ideas. And then once, you know, the team members put down those ideas, then you can go into a group meeting of, I know, three, four, five, I think max five people. I wouldn't say more than five people. <clears throat> and then start, you know, coming up with ideas, start ideating, and then further develop the spreadsheet with, with the extra ideas that came up with, within the group session. Mm -hmm. And then go away again for two, three, four days. And then again, individually start you know, filtering out those those topics and and then you know on slack you can you can come to a definite you know set of maybe three three ideas um that you can you know pitch to the client after after you finished and and that's that's kind of the, the process this is the like the best process to come up with with, with great ideas mm -hmm. yeah nice nice fair enough yeah yeah i got it yeah it takes time uh, it's like uh, deep research before uh writing pitching so yeah okay uh i'm interested about common mistakes uh for example you know in my agency we always make mistakes a lot of mistakes uh, for me it's hard to count how many mistakes i did i still doing them but <laughs> can you tell uh, but, but i remember you know elon musk one shared uh you know if you don't do if you don't have mistakes, that means you are not innovative enough. So yeah, that's what I want to say. 
Yeah, and one more time, I remember when Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest uh, basketball player, uh, replied to this question about mistakes, and he told uh, if he started something new, he always makes mistakes. But he doesn't feel uh, they are mistakes. He feels uh, uh, it's learning, you know, it's education. Uh, without this education, you can't uh, be productive uh, on specific niche. So let's talk about common mistakes. Uh, Tell what kind of mistakes PR agencies or PR specialists still do and how to find a much better way. Okay. So common mistakes is going to, so this is the biggest problem in PR. Mm -hmm. Trying to, trying to be a promotional service rather than a a link earning service. So sometimes clients come to you and say, we're just launching this new product and we would love to do some link building based on you know how great our product is. Forget about it. That's the biggest mistake most and, and the biggest mistakes of PRs is that they say, oh yes, let's do it. It's not gonna work. I know every product is great and I truly appreciate all the innovation that all of our clients are putting into their products. But unfortunately, journalists don't care and their audience don't really care. Therefore, we have to find you know, clever ways of not, not writing about this company has launched this revolutionary Uber of sandwiches or Uber of whatever mirrors on the cars, like whatever, you know, everyone wants to launch, you know, and everyone's got a solution to everything, but, and they are great, but that's not gonna get us links, consistent links every month to our client's website. So mistake number one, work together with the client, make sure they understand P digital PR or PR, like digital PR mostly is not a brand promotional service that will generate you leads once you land in the sun because it's it's not gonna it's in most cases that yeah there might be some cases and i appreciate those who have managed to do this sometimes but i know it's not gonna get buzz it's not gonna generate links it's not gonna generate you know um coverage so mistake number one do not use digital pr as a brand promotion service if you want consistency yes maybe once or twice a year you might you know land you, you launch a great you know product and you might land but if the aim is link building it's not going to be consistent unless you you go with another angle which is presenting your client as the expert who helps you know the audience that's related to their to their niche instead of talking about how great their service is. So that's mistake number one. Do not go, the people mm -hmm. go to promotional to on brand, talking too much about the brand, which journalists, yeah. when journalists see that, they're like, oh my God, yes, another, you know, promotional service. They think, you know, I'm like a fool. I'm going to cover their great product because it's not going to, you know, really serve my audience, right? Journalists are like, they are vested, um, quite clever people. So it, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, Apple or Tesla or Amazon can do it because yeah, people are yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, this brand. Yeah, yeah, it is. You can you can be more probably like Tesla launches, you know, uh, a, a Model Y with Optimus uh, robot in the boot, right? That's that's kind of yeah. People can now buy a car with a robot, which is kind of um, it would get lots of coverage, right? But but maybe yeah. not. Uh, you know, this company has launched an employee. Um, whatever retention software that will help you retain 20% more stuff like okay well uh, great why yeah i think down. it depends on the recognition so if you have strong brand recognition and when people want to know more about your brand so yeah you can yeah, yeah, but probably. in in most cases it's better most not to do it Indeed. Okay, very. Uh, I have a lot of students in my network, and uh, many of them wanna be successful link builders or PR specialists. Uh, let's imagine you started from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills, completely from scratch. Uh, you didn't do any PR campaigns. What will you do today to learn more about digital PR? Mm. <clears throat> okay, great question. I love this. Um, I would go to YouTube. And 
first of all, I would I would go to my all my devices. So if they really want to be committed to this and really want to be very good, I would open up my tablet, my laptop, everything, and I would delete Netflix. I would delete every entertainment, <laughs> and I would go to YouTube and consume hundreds of hours of every digital PR video that's out there. That's that's what I've literally done. I went mm -hmm. to YouTube and I I was driving. I had my phone in front of me and while I was driving to office I was watching all the digital PR videos on the web. Every every digital PR speech that was on Bryce Nessio on every you know all of our you know other agencies who um are in the digital PR field they had a YouTube channel I went there and yes they, some some of them might be watching yes I have watched all of your content I consumed everything that's out there about digital PR. I I I was so like after watching hundreds of hours I literally knew everything about every campaign of every agency in the UK. I knew everything about the industry because I watched hundreds of hours and I watched it over and over again. It's not just, oh, I, I'm just watching. I, cons I really consumed the content. I really internalized it. I was going to bed. I couldn't sleep because I was thinking of you know digital PR and just become obsessed with this, consume hundreds of hours of content and just keep on going for many months. If you do this, you will be an expert within a few months. Like, like there's no way. Start. Of course, you you also have to start doing it. Start experimenting. After you you know you have the knowledge, you go out there. Go and pay um, five hundred pounds a month for Roxil Media, which is a starting point, and start pitching journalists with your stories. Don't worry if like the first twenty stories are not going to land, or if you get like angry journalists coming back to you. Sometimes it's part of the game. Just keep on going for many many months. And eventually, if you are really obsessed with it, and if you are really obsessed with it, if you really want it, you will get there. It's 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 a formula. Consume every content out there. Start doing it. Don't give up after six months. If if no links lands, don't give up. Keep on going. Keep on watching uh, content, and you will get there. It's it's it works. It really really works. Yeah, I I agree. You know, hundred uh, percent. By the way. Uh, I remember when PewDiePie posted uh, 100 videos to get only 100 subscribers. Right now he has uh, 100 uh, 10 million. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Beast posted videos an year and a half to get a uh, thousand subscribers. Right yes. now everyone knows about Mr. Beast. Yes. So you don't need to give up if you can't get results even for a few months. It, it takes years. Same, same <laughs> to I think Mr. Beast is such an inspiration for, for me because it really shows mm -hmm. the power of consistency, the power of not giving yeah. up, the power of it's hard. There's no, you know, outcome there, but just keep on doing it if you really want it. And I think it's it's brilliant that, that it's hard because it really filters out those people who don't want it. It just it's just a perfect system, right? It should be hard, like big things should be hard because it really feel it really allows only those who are really obsessed with with this thing, whatever thing it is, to succeed. It should be hard. Yeah. It better be hard. Right? But I have the final question uh, yep. about the future. Can you predict the future of digital PR? Because many things are coming, metaverse, augmented reality, I don't know, name them. But uh, in the end, uh, I still uh, get questions, SEO is that, PR is that, email is that. So uh, a lot of stuff. Is that but uh, yeah. your predictions about the future? What kind of future of PR will be? Is it a good idea to start today to learn more about PR? Any insights? I think I think SEO will be alive for at least ten more years. That's what I think. Yes, it will change. Maybe we will use more AI. We'll use more automation, more you know clever systems. But definitely SEO is like is not that. Um, Matt Cotts used to say like links are useless you know, like in 2000 whatever like early uh, 2010s and still links are good links are probably the most important factor in, in rankings at this point so and they will only become probably more 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 relevant and more more powerful if they are good links so SEO is, is probably 10 years it's not going to be that so if you want to get into a career in digital PR or even in just any, any link building um, and you want to do it well, I would say, like, it's one of the best places to be. Um, and the future, I think it's all, the competition is going to increase. 
Um, hopefully, thanks to me, because hopefully I'm going to share so much info that everyone wants to do it themselves. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally increasing competition in the industry by giving away all the knowledge for free so everyone can do it, um, which I think is great. Competition is always good. It always helps, you know, us innovate and, and become better. So we are pushing the boundaries of, you know, what's possible with digital PR. So, yeah, I think there's going to be more competition in digital PR, but the links are not, probably not going to be less important for the foreseeable future. And they're going to, only going to be more important um, because, as I think I've just you know watched um, Matt Digiti was talking about it. Maybe you know Matt Matt Digiti on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He's had SEO and he said like uh, when when everything is at, at at even level, technical SEO content, um, value on the website, everything is the same. Like how do you make a difference? Like it's only the links that are going to make the real difference in in rankings. And and most of of the you know websites in a competitive industry, they are all or very good quality. The content is really, really good on all of them. So that's where the links come in and they are only going to be more important. Um, that's what I can see. Yeah, you know, I, I love your reply. Let me tell you why. Because, uh, you know, when uh, someone replies that SEO will never be dead, who knows, you know, uh, many, many things. I, I remember when Jeff Bezos uh, shared on his meeting with a team that Amazon will be bankrupt one day. So, because... Uh, Nothing can be forever. Uh, people change habits, but it takes time. It really takes time. Uh, we see uh, SEO is growing. Uh, right now it's growing. But if you can see declining, it takes decades, you know, to change habits. So, yeah. Exactly. Like if, let's say, videos are going to be, you know, a big ranking factor and not, not links, maybe you're having like five videos on your website or your page is having better you know better factor than uh, 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 they will become a better ranking factor than links then okay let's just start setting up video studios and creating more videos and then we'll adapt right so we seos are you know, very adaptable creatures so i'm pretty sure we will adapt <laughs> if anything changes right yeah by the way if you have experience uh today with something that works today that means you can adapt to any Thing that will uh, happen in the future so uh, you don't need to wait when something will uh, happen but uh, having experience is much faster to adapt mm -hmm. to new technologies mm -hmm. that we usually do yeah we usually adapt to new things that are coming so yeah like the, the, the winners i think the winners in as in the future of seo will be just as you know charles darwin said not the most skilled seo not the best link builder, not the best, you know, content creator, whatever, strategist or technical SEO, but rather the SEO person who can adapt the fastest. Like who, yeah. who is the fastest to adapt, to change, those are going to win. It nice, applies nice. to everything, right? Love it, love it. Fairy, it's a big pleasure to get my That's show, to learn from you. Yeah. yeah, tell our audience how they can reach out to you, learn more about you, follow you. I, I, I love your LinkedIn, so Thank I 100% recommend to uh, follow Ferry on LinkedIn, but any other uh, best ways to reach out to you? I think I think LinkedIn is, is my, my, my little place. I, I wake up at night time and I'm on LinkedIn. I wake up to even you know, drink, drink water and I've checked LinkedIn at 2, 2 a.m., which is crazy, I know. But, but yeah, LinkedIn is, is my place. I'm, we're going to do more of YouTube next year and more of you know, all, all the other channels, but LinkedIn is the main main channel. Um, I kind of checked out in the past few days, but I typically post almost every day on LinkedIn where, whenever I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not like the, on holiday downtime. Um, and hopefully I can, you know, inspire people there and help people and increase competition in the industry. That's my goal, you know, to increase competition. So we are pushed to innovate um, in the niche, which, which, which is what I love. So yeah, yeah, you know, I, I see that competition makes you stronger, you know. <laughs> because... yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. I love it. I love a mud, you know, I love a muddy football field. Let's play, May, you know, let's let's play in a muddy field where you know there's big competition and it's hard, right? It's been, where things are hard, I love it. Nice, nice. Okay, guys, you can find the links uh, to Ferry uh, LinkedIn account in the description below. You can find his website, uh, uh, reach out to him, learn from him, follow him, because you can see a lot of valuable insights. Okay, guys, love you. See you.